Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. Hey, I found kind of an interesting one offered for sale by Guitar Chimp on Reverb today. So this is a 2015 Gibson Custom Shop Les Paul Custom M in a finish that I don't think I've ever seen before, TV Gold. So here's a quick little teaser shot, but let's go ahead and do a brief rundown of what a TV finish is. This finish was actually first used by Gibson in the late 50s on their juniors and specials. And the big thing about these, besides kind of being that off white yellowish color, depending on how much they've aged, is you can see through to the mahogany wood grain underneath. That's the biggest thing for me for a TV finish to be a TV finish. Now as to why it's called TV, there are so many theories online. And I was always brought up to believe that this one was true right here. It would look better on black and white TV sets. Because back in the day on black and white sets, if something was pure white, it would cause some distortion in the image. I mean, I'm not an expert when it comes to that. And I always just accepted that as fact. But since this finish is mainly only found on juniors and specials, why would they think a professional would be playing these student model guitars? And at this point, it's this theory right here that I think I believe the most. The finish by Gibson was actually called Limed Mahogany. And it was named that because it was very popular in furniture making and in TVs that were big at the time to have this limed mahogany finish. The exact same thing. I mean, here's a pretty sweet dresser with the same type of finish on here. So since it was popular at this time, it just kind of made sense to put that on a guitar and see how it would do. Start off with a cheaper guitar and then maybe do it for the higher end ones, which besides a special order or something, I don't think they've ever happened. And I'd never heard this one before, but I thought it was worth sharing. Somebody speculated that maybe TV stood for Telecaster version, hoping that somebody would mistake it for a butterscotch blonde Telecaster because, you know, there wasn't the internet. There wasn't a bunch of photos. It might be possible somebody might pick that up instead of the fender that they were actually going for. But anyways, for me, it's all about being able to see that wood grain underneath a slightly yellowish finish. So naturally, when I see something called TV gold, it sparks my interest. So take a look at this. I'm a fan of Les Paul's where you can see that natural wood grain underneath. Although my love for that really comes when you can see the wood grain on the back of a Les Paul. I really hate all black finishes because it's like, you've got so much potential here that you could bring out on this guitar visually. So the top, you're gonna notice that is not a maple wood grain. And if we go back to our title here, what does a Les Paul Custom M even mean? M stands for mahogany, mahogany top. So this is built like an original 50s custom. A lot of people don't realize the original Black Beauties have mahogany tops to them. So if we zoom in here, instead of just a plain yellow, you actually kind of have a sparkly gold finish that you can also see the tight mahogany wood grain through. That's kind of interesting, especially this area. You can tell it has that metallic flake to it, so it's gonna be a little bit darker in this area, lighter in here, depending on the light. Oh man, this is just hitting me. They've blended a Les Paul Custom with a Les Paul Standard from the 50s. So we've got custom attributes, but the gold top finish. That's kind of cool. But as far as the rest of it, it looks like black plastics with reflector knobs, two humbucker pickups, three-way toggle switch, just basic stuff, but with a Nashville-style bridge. So having a Nashville-style bridge likely means you have a short neck tenon. Like they weren't necessarily going for 57 reissue specs, they just happened to want this. But ooh, it does look like I can verify or deny that. Yep, just like I thought, short neck tenon. So instead of being a proper reissue, it's just borrowing some of those attributes and being a custom shop Les Paul Custom. Looks like our pickups are a 490R and it was probably originally a 498T in the bridge, but it looks like they've replaced it with, I believe it's a PRS Dragon or something. If I remember the listing correctly. I wonder if they did a single piece mahogany or if they just matched it really well. But now we move on to the fretboard. Huh. Here I was questioning whether it's a 57 or 68 reissue and it's got a rosewood fretboard. Yeah, that's not what would traditionally be on this, but let's do a little bit of Gibson history just in case you're new to the game. You gotta look at when this thing was made, 2015. The whole rich light, federal raids, making it hard to use ebony and sourcing other woods, that started in late 2011. So that year is kind of that cutoff where they switch over to rich light. So you can pretty much guarantee anything made from 2012 and ending in 2019 will have a rich light fretboard. 19 is that year where they kind of transitioned back into it. So many people, when they were custom specking out an instrument or when Gibson was doing a limited run, they would decide to, instead of using rich light, because that still kind of has a stigma against it, 
they would go with rosewood, kind of like the uh, second generation of widowed guitars. But I think I can dig it on this one because since it's an all mahogany Les Paul, it kind of, you know, keeps with that brown theme this thing's got going on. So, so hey, it's real wood. You either like it or you don't. It's a spec of this one. As far as our headstock, it's just your standard Gibson headstock of this era. You've got the custom emblem, the Gibson Mother of Pearl logo, Les Paul custom truss rod with two screws, and it looks like uh, some sort of a Grover tuner on this one. But now flipping over to the back, do we have anything super interesting? Eh, not really. Just basic stuff here. Once again, beautiful wood grain. I mean, that really does look like they just took a single slab of mahogany and just carved it out into a Les Paul. That must have been a giant slab. Or they just did a really good job book matching it. But we've got the custom shop medallion here and the regular stuff. What do our electronics look like in here? Honestly, that, that looks a little bit amateur hour, but remember, they did replace the bridge pickup, so that's not Gibson's doing, but I mean, that doesn't even look factory stock either, so somebody's definitely played this thing, as well as made some modifications. But the back is bound, as was the top, and yes, I was right, Grover tuners with a Gibson Custom Shop decal, a little bit hard to see through this TV gold finish, and now Custom Shop serial numbers that look like this. I'll teach you this real quick. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Six digits right here. That tells you you're in the 2010s era. So this one will tell you your year, 2015. And then this is like a production number or something like that. Now, if that only has five, that means you're in the 2000s. So that would make it a 2005. Custom Shop serial numbers can get very confusing. That only applies to one that has CS, space, then blah. But come to think of it, they're probably going to have to add another digit now that we're in 2020. I guess I haven't paid attention to the new ones. And as far as our case here, your standard lift and reissue and Les Paul Custom M. That's the first time I've seen that. Usually you find a Q or an F for quilt or flame top, but I guess M being mahogany. That's kind of cool. So not your standard Les Paul Custom, but you know, an interesting one at that. And it's available on Reverb for $2,999 and $70 shipping. Honestly, I think they're being pretty fair with that price. I mean, it's a unique guitar. I mean, it has some less desirable specs to some people who are purists. And you got to keep in mind, once again, it is not a reissue custom. It's just a custom shop custom. So all things considered, that's a fair price. It'll sell. But hey, we're not done talking about TV finishes yet. What did you guys think? I'm just going to talk about it a little bit. We got to fill this out to 10 minutes. Apparently, TV Gold has been done on an SG standard. That looks pretty cool because I love the wood grain of SG, so that works out well for there. And it looks like here is a 57 reissue custom done up in the same one. I've got to say, I prefer this look, that dark colored fretboard matching with all this other stuff, the super thick plastics, the ABR1 bridge. That's a really nice look of a gloss version of one of those. Looks like this might actually be the original guitar that we were just looking at. That's a different view of it. That's one good thing about Dave's Guitar Shop. They have an interesting way to take those photos that really accentuates these tops. Now, here's a really interesting one. TV Black. <laughs> but yet the undercoat's like gold. It really matches with the gold hardware. Somebody was trying to uh, do a new Guitar Day program of one of these recently, but I don't think it's actually a real run. It was just like a made-to-measure type thing but that's looking pretty fancy. And take a look at that on an Explorer, man. I like it, but at the same time, I think that would look better with like an ash body because then you get all the swirliness of ash. And the triple ply pick card, I think that's a bit too much. I think single ply would have looked better on that. And here's just a regular TV black, a nice subtle finish. Not necessarily my favorite, but I think it looks nice on a guitar like this. I guess the uh, Custom Shop 336 is like the special version of a 335. Since it has the wrap tail and two P90 pickups, just in dog-eared covered format. And it looks like there's also a TV white finish. I'm familiar with that one. I've seen it a few times. And a TV finish on a flying V just reminds you of the original Carino, because most of those ones are made of mahogany nowadays, unless it's a limited run or like a super custom order that you're willing to pay money for. I don't know about you, but I think I'm TV'd out. So let's go ahead and check out some playing demos of some cool TV finished guitars. <laughs>
The only question left, would you rock this TV Gold Les Paul Custom or not? Leave your answer down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.